Hey, it's John Gafford. If you want to catch up more and see what we're doing, you can always go to thejohngafford.com where we'll share any links that we have, things we talked about on the show, as well as links to the YouTube where you can watch us live. And if you want to catch up with me on Instagram, you can always follow me at the John Gafford. I'm here. Give me a shout. Back from the break. And this is also that wonderful time of the podcast when I always tell you, if you're listening to us on YouTube, make sure that you like and subscribe and uh, set that little notification for when new videos come up. Um, and, you know, whatever podcast system you're listening to us on, make sure you give us the maximum amount of star reviews. It does matter. It what does do they matter. do in Bulgaria? I don't know. They have like the... <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> Cole's like, for the record, I've never been to Bulgaria. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know. <laughs> Although, however, I do culture. somewhat resemble a mongoose. <laughs> yeah, so we'll go with so that. We'll just go, we'll with, go that. with that. So today on the <laughs> podcast, if you missed part one, this is part two. We're talking about, with everybody talking about recession coming, what should you be doing in the face of recession? So I'm talking about some things that we do within our companies uh, and how they can trickle down and how you can use what big corporations do in the face of slowing times to affect and help yourself. Uh, so far in, 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 you know, in, in episode one, I guess also call it, uh, we talked about analyzing your staff. We talked about analyzing your budget. We talked about analyzing debt. We talked about really analyzing all of your income streams. So that's where we are. So jumping right back into it, this is the one I think everybody struggles with the most, and this is the easiest one to do, but there's a, there's a trick to it, which is auditing your services and expenses. People do not do this enough. Now, if I tell you, Colt. Guilty. Yeah, well, well, here's the problem. They don't analyze what they're doing. This is why, honestly, I think when you lose your credit card, it's one of the best things that can happen to you. It's, it's oh, yeah. So we've it's talked one of about the this. Best things that can I'd happen. rather get kicked in the nuts by Francis and Ghani about six times right, right. than do that. I know. However. 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 Yeah. There is this tertiary benefit mm -hmm. that you're never going to understand until that day happens. Yep. Now, if you have an LVAC membership, they say, too fucking bad. We're gonna bill you and then hit your credit on. Right. By the oh, way, do they? it never did mine, but they were threatening it one time. I lost my credit card, my debit card. That Sons I had of on. bitches. They're they're brutal about it. Like, okay, uh, do you guys, you got a debit card on something? So I, I used to. So again, I had a different experience. Is this the Canadian? Is this the Canadian? It was the thing? Canadian okay, thing. I didn't have credit cards. So I had yeah, to. I but it. now I have more credit cards than you know yeah. than JJ. Oh, look at you, Flossy. <laughs> no, 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 no. Whoa! Whoa. Big I, credit card, Chris. Big credit card, Chris. What's up, buddy? They even have stickers on them. They even have travel they well do stickers, have stickers on them. Stickers on them. So <laughs> shout out to JJ Todd. Um, so yeah, yeah, no. You got to be aware of that stuff. And when it comes down, they say, "Hey, you haven't made your bill." It's like, okay, I'll pay. Wait a minute, I don't need rollup.com's five month five dollar oh, yeah. a month service that i didn't what know i that? had what is that I've, I've probably paid some exorbitant amount of money okay. for services i totally don't even well realize. here's okay let's talk about that so with it with us within the company the number one place i look for is sas software as a service yep. i look at things that we are currently utilizing i try to negotiate better deals on all of those things i mean you should be doing this once a year especially if you know when when, when somebody does software as a service to a company there's like a big setup period like there, there's a, there's some lift to it but then there becomes this period of like they're not really doing anything for you anymore like you've got access to the back end where you go through and figure this out and really it's just hosting you know, at some point there's no right. value. So I'll give an example, like our, our Simply Vegas website, which, you know, won an, an award several years ago and we designed it because I helped design it. But part of the original design deal was that I own, I own the, the, the GUI code, right? Like I own the look and feel of the website. They don't own it. I do. And we're paying like 600 bucks a month just to host that thing. Really? Yeah. And I mean, granted, it's got, you know, it has IDX integration and all that, but Honestly, anymore for three grand, I can have somebody rip the GUI down. Mm -hmm. Not even that. I mean, I'll call it two grand. Yeah. I can have somebody rip the GUI down, integrate me with, you know, IDX broker IDX. It'll, you know, and customize the look and feel of everything. So it works and looks exactly like it does now. I'm going to have to come out of pocket maybe three grand, but then I'm hosting it on our own servers and the cost is zero. Bluehost, 10 bucks a month. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, we, we have nothing. cloud servers that we own. I mean, it just costs us, it costs me nothing yeah. at that point. So I said, you know, I told our, our, our tech department, you guys need to start looking into getting this done because yeah. they just wouldn't budge. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to help this company stay in business with us. I'm like, guys, I just, there's no value here for me. Right. And they just, we don't get it. Okay, cool. You don't get it. Peace. I'm out. And some people will, will get it and some people will not. Because once you've been doing business with somebody for a while, like if you're somebody that calls them every five days. Like, I need you to change this. I need you to do this for me. I need you to do that for me. Okay. It's a pain in the ass to deal with you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If, you, if I would talk to you in a year, 
and you've just been getting this money every month. Yeah. And all of a sudden it's like, hey, I'm still trying to send you some money. I'm just not gonna send you as much. All of a sudden it's like, well, I, it doesn't. Hey, no, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, no skin off my teeth. I didn't have to talk to this well, guy. And I think, I mean, just as if you only have a business, your car insurance. Shop your car insurance I, every look year. Look at you, Colt John, right here on the oh, list. Shop oh, the insurance. Sorry, sorry. When's the last time? Are you looking? When's no, the last I'm not, but I, well, I you're, because you're, that's something I grew up in the car industry, right? Like yeah. you get insurance for brand new cars or whatever. And now three years, four years later, your car is not a brand new car. You know, things are changing. So yeah, you, you shop, shop insurance rates i do all, all of it shop out. when's the last time you, i mean you just today you just send that month did you really do it today okay well good for you, you Chris. Really did? Good. Look at you yeah we, we we're upping a bunch of stuff right oh. but good for you so but we, we got it totally. well that's why good for you that no that's just totally coincidental yeah, yeah. yeah but no, you, I, I need to do it more often you so. have to shop that <laughs> and people this is stuff people don't but back to back to stuff software as a service yep. The number one place where you, if you're at home, you're an average person where you're getting probably got is now all these damn streaming services. Mm -hmm. oh, and there's a yeah. million of them. And here's the thing. Here's the problem. I'm going to tell you the problem right now you have with streaming services. And here it comes. Ready? You tell yourself, I got to batten down. I got to do the difference. And you start going through it where you lose your credit card and you start seeing all the crap that you pay the monthly fee for, right? And you're like, oh, it's only $6. You tell yourself a lie. And this is the lie. I'm probably going to watch it again when Yellowstone comes on. I'm probably going to watch it again when this comes on. I'll yep. watch it again. Guess what? Here, here's the secret. You can unsubscribe and then resubscribe when you need it. Right? Don't just let it carry. It takes two seconds yeah. to resubscribe to this stuff. But yet you're like, you, you want to, oh, man, maybe I'll I have Peacock. Sometimes. Dude, do this. Because the NBA Finals yeah. was only showing a game on it, I get it. one time. Yeah. I've been but, paying for it for 12 months. I, I forgot know. about it. I, yeah. Yep. I and that's the same thing with dude. the uh, boxing thing. That, yeah. uh, the ESPN, ESPN and, uh, Plus, no, yeah, no, no, not that one. The other one that uh, oh, uh, um, uh, Canelo uh, does, uh, whatever um, that is. Uh, but the same thing. The zone. No, yeah, but the zone. but yeah. but dude, go into your iPhone <laughs> and look at your like look into your reoccurring subscription. You'll be shocked. And how much stuff? Yeah. I actually, you know, the one app that I do love, InstaRead, where I, I read the books quickly and decide if I want mm -hmm. to read them. Dude, I had two subscriptions running at the same time. I don't I know have how that's two possible. Audible subscriptions. I found. I don't know how that's possible. Right, like, dude, unsubscribe from everything and then just resubscribe as you need it. And I think you'll be shocked at how much stuff you just completely forget about and never go back to. Or borrow your friend's login. <laughs> which, they, <they've laughs> shut, which they've shut down, which is crazy. But yeah. Can I mean, you imagine though, you guys? Think yeah. about the business opportunity here. If you took all of the streaming services and put them all on one platform where all the channels were there at once. We just had everything? Man. God. <laughs> Can we only dream? What a world. Cable Elon. television. Forget, <laughs> cable, 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 you'd have cable television. <laughs> like, I thought you it was You guys such have a cox? Like, because my cox I did, has gotten I well, that's so okay. expensive. I, $300 a month. Let's, that's why yeah, I okay. joke around. All right, let's, let's talk about that. Yeah. How many people just have cox cable at their house? Because they've had it forever. All right, cancel I, it. My, ca my cable bill at my house. And I just because we and I think we may have now found a solution with the YouTube TV thing. I think YouTube that TV might be a solution. is infinitely better. Yeah, that might be a solution. But just we have so many TVs. I won't mention how many we have because it's egregious. Um, but we have so many different things. I had to have Cox Cable because like Direct TV couldn't do it. Whatever else, so I think our cable bill is like seven hundred dollars a month. Probably because mine's three. Yeah, it's, it's, or it's, something, it's, and it's I bananas. Don't do and we're right now we're leaning into into moving off of it because I think the YouTube TV YouTube TV is great. Go. We need yeah. to talk about this later because I'm same thing. Oh yeah. 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 And, here, and here's the thing: just like the subscription stuff, you know, when I'm like, well, maybe I'll use it. I'm like, well, maybe one day we'll have a Super Bowl party and I'll need yeah. 19 TVs on at one time. Okay, number of times I have a Super Party, zero. You come over to my Super I go to your party. house. I, I'm not ever going to have it. As long as we're party. friends, I'm going yeah, to your I'm house. Not not really stupid. <laughs> stupid. Uh, telecom, you know, renegotiate your telecom. When's the last time you looked at your cell phone bill? When's the, I look at all of your bills and I'm telling you, you'd be amazed at what you'll get if you just, if you just try. You know, what? yes, I'll tell you the story yesterday. My son uh, had a... Uh, Something he was supposed to do for school. I don't know what it was. I mean, my son's an exceptional student, and he had something he was supposed to do for school. And he couldn't get into it because he couldn't get in the system because he thought he could get into it over the weekend, and he couldn't because he's locked out of school, whatever. And he's stressed out about this like crazy. Oh, my God, I'm, it's going to drop me. I'm going to get a B. He's gonna drop, stressed out all weekend. And, and here's the thing. I, you know, if he gets a B and he tries, I don't care. Right? He's eighth grade, yeah? Yeah, he's in eighth grade, right? But, but I don't care. Yeah. But it, what I'm looking for is the effort. That's all I care yeah. about, right? And... You know, he goes and he says to me, he goes, there's nothing I can do. And I go, all right, here's the deal. If you get a B in this class, I'm going to take away your phone for the entire summer. 
So I told him, I'm going to take it away for the whole summer if you get a B. Eyes got real big. And Guess get, who figured it out? Hang on. Yeah. And my wife, go, my wife goes, why don't you just email the teacher? He goes, I don't think I can do that. I go, you're losing your phone. It's up to you. Man, I would try a whole bunch Hang of on. stuff right, right now. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah. No. So, so he, he, he gets the email from my wife. He emails the teacher. And she responds back with, Hayden, I know the complexity of the novels that you read. Don't even worry about doing it. <laughs> Don't even worry about just it. about asking. Right? And, and the point was, when trying. he got done, I looked at him and I said, just so we're clear, I could care less about the B. I could care less. I care about the, I care about the fact about, that you said yeah. there was no move because there's, there's always a move. A move. There's always a move somewhere. 100%. So yeah, there you go. Always something you can do. Don't tell me there's nothing yeah. you can do. It's so, <laughs> this sounds shitty to say, and I've said this before, and what I mean by it is less sinister than what it sounds like. Oh. Cult like sinister. Right right. No, so this is he knows where the bodies are buried, like me, apparently. I'm going to say something very sinister, but I think it has application, and I think it goes sure. to your point. Anybody who lies, you ever met a liar? Somebody that yeah. literally is a liar. Anybody who lies just means they're not clever enough to understand what the truth looks like. <laughs> There's the truth and well, the no, truth. But, but, but it's true, right? <laughs> like Because you have to be an advocate for yourself. You have to frame things in a way that makes sense. You have to be able to figure things out, right? It means you're unclever if you have to lie. Mm. And I see quitting as like lying. So you're saying, he said, there's nothing I can do. Quitting Hands to up. me is the like universe, lying. The universe has dealt me the cards that I have. There's yeah, nothing I, I can I, do. I'm stuck. There's nothing I can do. That to me is what happens. And then liars lie to try to get out of what they feel is a, a lack of other solutions. Yeah. Right. That's typically why people lie because they're not clever enough. And, well, that's why people out. get into major trouble, right? Because there exactly. is a way to fix stuff. I all. I have one that luckily didn't go south, but it was so close going south. And I'm like, you guys, if you want to lie to me, I wouldn't have done another. The contract was going to be voided mm -hmm. because the contract days just ran out and there was a yeah. thing that we we're waiting on. We extended it another 60 days and then we found out somebody's lying to us. I'm like, great. Now we're going to lose $30,000 of earnest money because you lied to us, right? right. Like, that, who was it? John Gotti or somebody said, I don't lie because I'm not afraid of people. So that's, so you see what I mean by that? And it sounds like I said an application. It sounds like, well, that's just deceptive in a different way. What mm -hmm. it means is there's always a creative way mm -hmm. to problem solve. Sure. If I came up to you, you'll find that 95% of people desire to be helpful if you frame it in the right way. Mm -hmm. This is what I think. And again, I don't want to get political, but this is where the Democrats have absolutely lost so many potential voters is that they and don't. You would, you would know this. Well, no, yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> Time. I'm an independent. I'm a registered uh -huh, independent. Sure you are. I can <laughs> but, Google that. I, I'm not. I, like, but anyway, you can. I, I'll show up as a registered independent. But at the end of the day. Keep talking, Chris. Keep I'm talking. Go. He's, keep, he's Googling it. He's what, what people don't realize is that you need to let people feel good about helping you. You got to inspire people to want to help you. Sure. When you point a finger and say, you do this, you're this. Yeah. I'm never going to respond well to that. Nobody will. Yeah. But if you ever ask people, hey, can you help me out here? John, if I came up to you and said, you know, I can't pay my rent. If I said, hey, no. let me do something no. for you. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> just, I'm just kidding. No, but you know what I'm saying? Go, if, you, go if, ahead. If, if you frame it in a way, be like, hey, look. Hey, John, uh, I need to borrow $1,000 from you. Remember that one, you know, if I do, you do that in a way, you'll find a way out of it. You, mm. Or it, it gets uncomfortable or it's weird, right? Yeah. If you if you frame it where it'd be like, hey, can I do this for you? This is what I need, but I want to make sure I'm not taking advantage of you. So let me do this. In well, I'll, I'll tell you how to I'll tell you how to frame that. Yeah. If, if that's your situation, whatever but, it but, is. But, yeah. no, but, I, but there's somebody listening it's to this not right my now. Situation, but there's somebody listening <laughs> to this. <laughs> he doesn't but that need is their situation. That is their situation right now. And, and I I got this call. Do you see what I mean? But I got this call the other day yeah. from somebody. Um, somebody called me up and they said, hey, um, you know, look. With things are getting a little lean, I had some stuff fall apart. I don't know what I'm doing. I just wanted to know: is there anything that you, because you have so much stuff going on, is there anything that you think I would be good for to plug in as like a side gig? And I said, wonderful. And I said, yeah, man. Let me call you back. And I made two phone calls, and I called him back, and I said, I'm gonna connect you with this guy, and call him, and he's gonna sort you out. And I don't, I don't know anything came of it. But I felt good for helping this person. It exactly. solved the problem that I had. Yes. And it did nothing. Because I think innately, I think to your point, people I think people want to help. help other people. People they want wanna help. to help. People want to feel good about, yeah. about what they do. People want to be recognized, right? Yeah. The average person, we've said this many times, but most people are living quiet lives of desperation. If you come up to somebody and you make them feel special, how many times do people get on their high horse about, I Cold paid for daily. the guy's Starbucks behind me or whatever in line? 
you're talking about five, ten, twenty dollars worth of you yeah. know charitable goodwill or whatever passing along down. Starbucks at worst. No, but, no, but it's just one of those things where people there's a, a a desire for this in there's a human nature. There's this human element that we want to help our tribe. You, we do. Our tribes are, are way too big now to feel that's that Dunbar's number or whatever or the the. Yeah. But when you give people an opportunity to help and you frame it in a way where you're letting them know that you recognize that they're special or helpful or have the ability to help you, ninety five percent of people are, are going to step but, up and help. But but I'll, but I'll say this: if you want help, appear to be helpable. And what I mean by yeah, that very is very good point too. If like you said, living yeah. living living in a state of quiet desperation, like I gotta believe that you're you're trying. Yeah. Like if you're if you're you're trying, I'm into I'm into push the rock with you, right? right. But if you're looking for me to push the rock for That's you, That's right. Then no. Like for example, um, I don't know how this even came up last night. We probably should have talked about this, but I guess now the Starbucks employees are trying to unionize. Right. <laughs> you pour coffee. And you're talking about a company that is that is notoriously historically, historically. known, notoriously yeah. known, not historical, notoriously known for overpaying employees. Yeah, they're historically for, giving, for, for college education. Yes, for, for, for paying for health insurance. Insurance. Yeah, everything, were, health insurance, everything. And yeah. now you're trying to unionize against the big bag Starbucks. Well, so like I, like those people to me are not help a bowl. There's nothing about right. that scenario that I feel sorry for any of those people. I don't feel sorry for anybody who's trying to form a union, but I will say this. That's because you're, that's because you're blue. Yeah. You're blue. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Somebody uh, framed it to me this way. I personally don't think unions, I think employers when they're good, there's never an issue. So yeah. if you treat people well and you do whatever, most people will fight against it because Unions have a lot of problems. I've been in unions and I hated them personally mm -hmm. just because somebody's taking money and not doing shit for me. It's sure. just, they get fat. It's very political on their own. But somebody said to me this phrase, it goes, he was a shop steward and he said, what we're trying to do is you have units of labor and you have units of capital. Mm -hmm. We're trying to commoditize. We're trying to take greater power over the value of a unit of labor versus capital. Now, if we have the ability to do that, if there's something particular about our set of skills that allows that, then what is pre preventing us from utilizing our own uh, units of labor, right, to get a higher market value for them like you would if you had a scarce piece of real estate? But see, the way so I, I understand it. Here's the difference. The, the way that I, the way that I understand it, <clears throat> and I may be wrong, was unions were formed out of a need right. in the twenties in the industrial revolution because when employers would people employers. through brutal, right. terrible, dangerous, Absolutely. deadly working conditions. Right. The Democrats. Yeah. Democrats five day work week. That's it. All these things, right? See, he pushes all the positives, doesn't he? Yeah. No, 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 but what I'm saying is <laughs> if Republicans <laughs> would have known four days, Chris. Well well, here's the thing. <laughs> I, I can dabble and understand both worlds. But if you're an if you're uh, if you're somebody that isn't, you know, an owner of the means of production, I understand why you would want to empower the value of one of your units of labor. So I'm not, I don't begrudge that. Now me personally, as the owner of the, the means of production, if I was in that situation, I may shut them down and fire them all. You know, you, you, Some you people be, think their you, labor's more uh, special well, than it really well, is. Let's, you, well, you gotta understand the value of each in your market. Oh, if you're this, being though. overpaid, then if you go to do that, you may be cut out. But if right. you're being yeah. underpaid and you do that, it may work out. It may work out. If may if is may, the, key, if. the key word. Yeah. So that moves us to our next thing here that I think you need to do is audit your own efforts, mm -hmm. right? Um, here's a great, great exercise for you, especially if you are in the real estate biz or any sales biz where you are a non-paid full commission salesperson, mm -hmm. which is this. I'm willing to bet that you don't work nearly as hard as you think you do. Who, me? Oh. Anybody that's in that position. No, anybody's in that position. No, I know I know you think you work exactly as hard as you do. I know. Yeah, exactly you're, you're well aware of that. Yeah. Um, but, but no, I think you know, people <laughs> people will grind like a 40 hour week and they'll really only do twenty to thirty minutes of actual income producing activity, mm -hmm. which is crazy. You know what? That's a great point. Because there's so much distraction. Well, no, but it's not even necessarily a distraction because Sometimes the profits live in the margins, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say you go play golf for four hours and you end up getting the best commission deal you've ever had in your entire life from that relationship. Mm -hmm. Then you were working. No, but that's an income producing time because you're out with a client. That's income producing activity. Or, but, but, so I was trying to explain this to somebody the other day that when we talk about going out for cocktails, mm -hmm. that's a part of my job. I, I, right. I, I have that conversation all the time. I go, it is 
it's hard. To go out four nights, five nights a week, having cocktails, doing stuff. It's its mentally draining. Like mm-hmm. People sit there and think, oh, your life's so great, whatever. No, that's my job. It looks like, like a party. It looks, But the reason that you have the connections you do or whatever is because if you're generally a gregarious and social outgoing person, you're going to meet people. And when you meet people, you generate... You generate goodwill and, right. and, and inertia. And, 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 again, and again, all of that, I'm, I'm dumping into the, the category. But most people, all right, you go right now, go to any car lot, go to any car dealership. We'll take salesman, car salesman, which is where I learned how to sell, so I can comment on this. I'm not, I'm not speaking from no frame of Especially reference. if they take your down payment that you put online. That's right. Yeah, $100. <laughs> there you go. No, but the point being is, like, you walk, into, you walk into a car dealership right now, and there's nobody in the there's nobody on the showroom, no customers. There's two kinds of salesmen. There's a salesman standing around bullshitting with another salesman about nothing. Yeah. And then there's a guy that's on his phone calling everybody that's ever bought a car. Yeah. yeah. Right. One is utilizing income producing activities, and one is burning time. But how would you what'd you do today? Oh, I worked for eight hours. I was at the office for eight no, hours. Yeah. No, you didn't. Yeah. But it, but dude, the, the point being is. You were there. You were sacrificing your time. So the, the the mental effect on you is the same. Oh, yeah. It's exactly the same. So the point is, when you're going into a period of potential recession or potential slowdown, you need to be very cognizant of all of your activities and make sure that when you are at work, you're you are spending out. your time on income-producing really activities. Really good point. That's a very good point. It, you know, it, it, Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say one of, one of my favorite quotes ever was from this company. I worked at a real estate development firm in 2005, six. Um, this guy, I don't know if I've ever told you the story, but the vice president of the company, there's always this guy is talking about how much experience he has. I got all this experience. Mm-hmm. And the vice president of the company looks at me and goes, he says he has 20 years of experience. He's got one year of experience 20 times. Yeah. And to your point, yeah. I worked for eight hours today. Yeah. Or did you work for one hour, eight, and then, and then yeah. you know what I mean? And oh, then I, repeat those seven hours doing the same thing you did in that non-income producing hour. And, and people do that all the time. I, I piss off more people because I say, hey, you know, your clients <laughs> just are your not- general demeanor. Just, just, just your general demeanor. Just your general demeanor. I piss off more people. I don't know why when they say hi, I say, go, <laughs> go fuck yourself. I'm like, what was wrong with that? No, because um, they send me clients, right? And they'll sit there and say, this guy wants to go look at these five properties. And I call the person, no experience, they have no income, they have no reserve set up, everything. I say, you're not ready, call me later, right, when you're doing it. And they get so mad, well, you couldn't even go show them? No, no I'd rather go no. sit at the bar by myself for five hours than go drive around, waste, my time, waste time, gas. Like, no, I would rather sit by myself than waste my time. And, and that's where people don't realize that is your time is money certain level of confidence and experience before you realize that though. Oh yeah. 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 I I think, you know, most people don't realize that, you know, there's two types of people there's innovators and there's executors. Right. And well, there's probably more than that, but in general, there's two people. There's those that need a full explanation for things and people that figure it out. But but my, my, but my point being is my point being is, (laughs) is that, is that, (laughs) is that, if you are someone that is just really good at executing, you probably need to figure out how to become an innovator because it's times like these that you need to innovate some things. You yep. need to figure out how to do things differently. You need to figure out maybe different, better ways to get things done. You can't just execute. And I think, you know, I was reading an article in preparation for today talking about why big companies have such a hard time, you know, running lean. Why, why, why a lot of them, when they try to lean down, it really implodes because most of the big CEOs that run those companies are exceptional executors. They're not, they're not necessarily the idea people. They're not the people that come up with the best ideas. They're just exceptionally good at running a machine that can involve a hundred thousand people, which is yeah, a very yeah, yeah. Yeah. difficult it, task. Well, that's where organizational design, like the MBA programs and stuff. So when we studied organizational design, you go through these things and you'll find a lot of the dead weight comes in when there's like siloing. Mm-hmm. Right. So you'll have departments that do these right. things. There's a lot of repetitive tasks. Yeah. There'll be 67% overlap here. Right. So you only need two people doing it, but they're so siloed and there's a breakdown of communication between yeah. the organization. And so a lot of times they don't audit to your point. Yeah. They don't audit their own process. They don't bring the bobs in. They don't you got to bring, bring the, the bobs McKinsey's. in. You got to bring the McKinsey's in sometimes. And right. I don't always a- agree with cutting the fat because a lot of times you kill the nature and spirit of the company or there's intangibles that you can't account for yeah. in the X's and O's. But uh, to your point, 
you know, an understanding hey, and auditing is hugely yeah. valuable. I think you, Elon you Musk to. is one of those greats that actually do that, right? He is. Like, yeah. I got yeah. an idea. You guys go figure it out. Elon is yeah. running a rocket company and then a yeah. I want, I want yeah. a rocket company. We're going to do that. You know, you know, the next thing I would say, and I think about this every time I get gas. I literally think about this every time I buy gas now, oh, which is you, gas, you need to gas. understand the ROI on your efforts, the return on investment for totally. what you do. Now, keep in mind. Again, if you are someone that goes to a place and trades your time for for revenue, man, there is nothing wrong with that. If there's, you know, this is not about, you know, everybody needs to try to get on the hustle and be an entrepreneur. That's not about that. I mean, if you're someone that trades time for money, God bless. If you're happy and it makes you, you love your job, I'm, I'm all about it. But you need to, as things change, as, as inflation happens, as the price of things change, you need to understand your return on investment. And everything that you put into, like making that job go, that's an investment. And that, and, and there's a thing about this every time I pump gas. Like, dude, if you live 30 miles away from your job and gas is now almost six bucks a gallon and you're making 12, 14 bucks an hour, how are you doing this? Right, yeah. Like, how are you doing this? And I know that's a very extreme example, but there are people living like that. But, but it is, you monetize your, your activities. You need to break down and say like, look, where am I spending my money? And, and the stuff, and again, I always break it down to offensive money and defensive money, if you're in business for yourself, or you work for somebody else. Everything you do is about, you know, if you spend money, if you have to buy clothes to go work at a place, that's offensive money. You have to have these clothes to go work there. If you, if you have to drive there, you gotta buy gas. I mean, all of these little things go into that, right? So you need to look at this as that is an investment in your job. Right. And you gotta make sure that the money that you're getting back makes sense. And if it doesn't, you got two choices. And, and everybody loves change, man. They love when they have to make a change, but you've either got to go to your boss and explain to them, look, gas is up X. It, it's costing me, I'm filling up twice a week driving over here. I can't afford to do this. I need some help. Yeah, All right. And if you are, have done what we talked about in step one back in video A and made yourself a, an invalued employee that has taken on more than you probably should and you're viewed as an asset in the eyes of your company, they will figure this out for you. Sure, They'll figure it out. Closed but mouths don't get fed. Exactly, no. but but that sitting in silence thing is not going to be good for anybody. Closed mouths don't get fed. Remember that. Every right? you got to audit everything, right? Like I was just everything on the roofing side of stuff, right? I was talking to one of our guys, and he goes, "Man, just burning th so much gas." I was over here, over there, over here, over there. I go every morning. You need to wake up and have your day planned out. Understand your logistics. I go exactly. Make one big ass circle done for the day yeah. stop crossing this valley five times a day it's yeah. stupid you know and that's costing you a lot of money to do that and he's totally. like well you know but they want this i go you need to start enforcing times that you want to meet people right. you know as, as simple as that and people don't do that yeah being smart i mean you've got to i mean i guess the lesson for today if there is one overall lesson is nothing's off the table you got to look at everything, and some of those things are tough. From looking at the, maybe the current job you have, looking at looking at how much time you invest in that, looking at everything, looking at what you spend your money on, and being honest with yourself about canceling things, you know, storing some money away, tightening the belt a little bit. None of this stuff is fun, no. but you know that's like don't wait till it's too late. Yeah, dude, you, you think it's tough today? <laughs> it's coming quick. Yeah, wait. Six I'm just saying, wait till you're quick. behind the eight ball and you don't know you're going to pay your your mortgage or your rent next month. That's going to be way tougher than making plans for this today. Sure. And procrast and unfortunately procrastinating an economic change is something that you don't want to do because here's the best thing about it. Let's say you make all these changes. Let's say you do this stuff and nothing, nothing happens. Yep. Like the market's right. Just Great. You just save some more money and that's good. And who cares? But the one thing I will say is this, and it's my last little highlight on the, on the page here. And it says this, don't cut to the point where you sacrifice your core values. Right. Or don't change that, right? Like everybody has certain things. Like you look at our company and you look at Simply Vegas and there's things that make this company what it is, right? And even last night as I was talking to this guy about potentially folding his company in, there's some things that his company does that are not in tune with the brand, Im the brand image that we do. And that it's not the same lane. And I said to him, I go, you realize you're gonna have to let that go if you, if you want to come over here, cause it's just, we're never going to do that. And then later in the conversation, when he was talking about, you don't have recruiters, how'd you grow so big? It was like, because we're true to the lane that we chose yeah. and people want to be in that lane with us. And that's why we don't sacrifice those things. Now, if you don't own a big company, what does this mean for you? Dude, look at what's important in your life. 
And if spending time with your kids at dinner is, is important, figure out a way to do that. Don't pick up a hustle that's going to sacrifice those core things in your life that's going to that's going to make you unhappy. Because right. look, this is supposed to this exercise is supposed to make you more responsible, it's supposed to make you more balanced. diligent, it's supposed mm-hmm. to make you more balanced, but it's not supposed to make you miserable. No, no, no. That's not the point. It's how to do it effectively with it's just how to how to be conscientious of the efficiencies that can improve, you know, your life in any situation. Yep. It is. There's, there's only two kinds of people in the world, you guys. <laughs> Those who believe in binary. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And with that, we're going to wrap it up for another episode of the Power Movement. Unless, Colt, you have anything else you'd like to share? No, you know, I saw Tom <laughs> Hanks out at the mall okay, game with well, freaking Chet, yep, uh, moving his on. son. Moving God. on from Is that. The rapper, and, the and rapper we, Chet? Can yeah, we give it up? Hot, what's white his and perp, name? white and perp. Yeah, what's his name, though? They're, they reference him as something summer guy or yep. something. God, did, I, did I tell you that Las Vegas now we added another we added another jewel did you guys see I don't know if you saw this but if you didn't you can google it we had another jewel to the crown of Las Vegas lore we now have the best of something else we have the best worst first pitch in the history of baseball with Steve Aoki, Aoki. threw one almost over the backstop <laughs> in a pro game did you do see you that? remember oh, yes, he did. almost over the backstop how <laughs> How are you that bad? It was uh, like honestly, it was it was like he was trying to throw it to the press box. It was wow! That it bad. went up. Check into that out the on the foul. Oh yeah, no, it was bad. There was, a, was, there was bad. a first pitch one time. Who Not did it? Not as bad as it. Fifty yes. cent. This Fifty was cent. Bad. Oh this, no, this, this was worse. Far no, this worse. is impossible. For, it is. Watch it. Is far worse. Okay, I'll, I'll, I don't know how he did. How are you not prepared? If you're going to big league game, play a little catch before you go. Like go out in the backyard. Something. Something he can jump off of freaking his Something. house into his Something. pool, but he can't go Have throw a, a catch. tennis ball. Show him. And you can't like, tell me his dad. Yeah. His dad didn't play with him. His dad was Benny Hanna. So you're telling no, me that you know dad can throw it. an egg into Have his hat with a spatula, but yeah. he can't throw a baseball to his kid. Have you Come watch on, his documentary. No, I'm just I don't know what happened. I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> sure it was terrible. Anyway, guys. So we'll be back next week again. And look, I'm curious about something. So leave me hit something in the comments if you, if you would. Do you guys like the show when we bring people in, or do you like it just when we the three amigos? I'm curious what you think. So let us know. I mean, I guess it depends on uh, the yes. content. It depends. Whatever. Yeah, I guess it depends <laughs> on. Week. It depends on uh, on how much we can buy in cold ups. Anyway, you know, Nick and AJ and Jason Egan and you know they had some pretty interesting perspectives. Yeah, they did. That's a good point. Yeah. All right. Well, if you liked what we do, tell a friend. If you hated what we did today, tell two, because it doesn't matter if we're talking good about it, bad about you. What's the matter, Connell? It's only if they stop talking about you. It's only, <laughs> it only matters that they're talking about you at all. It's See you only next matters. time, guys. It's the only thing that matters. <laughs> it's all that matters. <laughs> hey, it's John Gafford. If you want to catch up more and see what we're doing, you can always go to thejohngafford.com, where we'll share any links that we have, things we talked about on the show, as well as links to the YouTube where you can watch us live. And if you want to catch up with me on Instagram, you can always follow me at thejohngafford.com. I'm here. Give me a shout.